Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Dear viewers, welcome back again to Youth Hour. We were talking to our young men and their ambitions I want to know about. Young men, tell me about your ambition. What do you want to be? Um, well, this is, a, I've been thinking for quite a while. I'm usually very indecisive, but at this moment, what I'm thinking about is going into, well, I like my subject, biology. I want to go more into conservation. It's something that not many people know about. Like, if you ask any Bengali, someone what's conservation like they don't know is the math since conservative or something like that i don't Basically. know myself actually <laughs> <laughs> okay normally so, yeah. what we think is you done you have to do your mess up that's it yeah you go to do be become imam or something else that's enough for you that's genuinely really that's what genuinely yeah, that's what we think a lot of people think that but usually. can you imagine majority of our imams mashallah we respect them and everything a lot of them are mm. they're just under fizi and we expect they to give us all their footwork and everything else mm. and they do it they would not say, I don't know. They would say, yes, I know. Yeah. And imagine where we, that's where we are. That's, that's, our level is there. Mm. Subhanallah, our level is there. We don't admit that. But that's why if you say you're level seven and someone come and ask you a question and you're trying to answer level yeah. 10, you will never understand no, what you're saying. Okay. So I think this is somewhere to catch up with Devin. Um, sorry go, about your ambition. Oh, yeah. So yeah. my one is, uh, I want to go into conservation, which is basically like protect, protecting oh. animals and plants mm. and wildlife. So it's Allah not bless you, man. <laughs> Subhanallah. I never thought it's it's closer were. to Sunnah than anything else. Subhanallah. <laughs> it's um, amazing. This is why we're suffering from acid rain and with all the other <laughs> environmental <laughs> crisis environmental. that we have. Crisis the amount of um, water we waste in the kitchen sink. Subhanallah. So doing wudu, having a bath, shower, I mean, brushing teeth. That's right. The so children leave the tap on when they're brushing the teeth. And this like <laughs> gallons of water being wasted. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's that, that is amazing subject you choose i mean something you want to be can yeah. i ask you for if do you have anyone inspires you to do this kind of stuff do you have any role model or anything uh f someone is wanting to do this i don't have anyone but as almost our main role model is the professor isn't Some it change. so whatever we yeah. do we try and follow him in that way so whatever you want to be if you follow the professor I mean, you'll get the inshallah the best of character you could uh, be the best of people that's the, our main role model but like, on a personal note my granddad who passed away like 10 years ago he was a very he was one of he was a great role model for me. He used to teach me a lot of things sure. and he used to take care, a lot of care of me. And you also need to make a lot of dua for your mum and dad. They yes. spend a lot of money behind you, honestly. Exactly, yeah. That's Going true. to a private school is a lot of money. Yeah. I have three kids. I couldn't put them there because I don't have enough money, honestly. Uh, yeah. I, I couldn't do it. But for, before we went for a break, yeah, and, um, you wanted to touch on something. Our young people, are, they don't speak Bangla, they can't write Bangla, they don't link with Bangladesh. Because they don't know, respect doesn't come into it. Um, do you think something we should worry about? Well, yeah, there are issues when I talk to young kids. Um, the issues are, is um, they're not, those generations are growing up here. They're not fluent in Bengali language. This is one. Also, parents may be spending lots of time and energy uh, back home buying properties uh, for them. But those who are growing up here, they find um, is difficulties because how they can handle uh, pressure in back home, in Bangladesh, for example, going to the court and also, you know, I'm talking about a land dispute. So they think um, it's, it's worthless uh, having properties back home spending here on me. As you said earlier on, that y you don't have money to send your kids, but there are lots of parents still buying, uh, maybe buying property back home and they're not spending money on their, ki on their kids or time. But I think it's changed now. Isn't it? A lot of people not doing that anymore. It, it came down a lot. It came down a lot. Yeah, people because not doing that anymore. people understanding is, but oh, yeah. isn't it too late? Yeah, isn't it too late? How, ma how, how many yeah. how many chi childrens are of the yeah. track? That's so, true. So, no, so think about our hamlets and yeah. um, the issues. Yeah. If you think back for last five years, uh, there are lots of antisocial things happens. There are few murders happens. Yeah. In our hamlets, for example, all of them, I think is related with Bangladeshi families, Bangladesh, the, the, the young Beng Bangladeshi kids. So there's uh, worrying things. Joyride mm. is another thing, car crash, you know, the, um, times. the driving very fast and involved in car crash. It's happened a lot. In, in, in yeah, I think we need to think about those things because uh, unless we admit that, we, we, there's no solution. Yeah. We have to admit there are some issues. Yes, there are some other communities that are doing it too, but yes, let's face our one first. We have this issue, let's find a solution. Uh, there's, there's, a, there's a whole plethora, a bunch of uh, issues that we can't answer 
in one go because I think there's on one level there are the parents who their engagement with their children are not there mm. and then you the leadership of the of the society of the community that you live in they're not perhaps playing their role effectively enough yeah. and, uh, and 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 to begin with how far do you actually how far do you point fingers because you can always blame your parents generation and say okay they didn't know and they couldn't tell us but then if they would say that our parents didn't know enough to tell yeah. us to you see to teach yeah. us so how far do you go back it's about taking responsibility the time that you live in now it's about taking the responsibility now and here so that the future could be secured somewhat at least and that at least you don't are you're not responsibly personally on the day of judgment so that Allah doesn't stop you and say look you didn't do it, play your role mm. to bring your own children up correctly and if you hadn't done that then you would be stuck personally on the day of judgment no but can I ask you something here yeah. because we live here this is our country mm. we are British, we live here because some of my, ki my kids are born here. I'm sure you're born here too. This is our country. Wherever you are, that's your place. And you try to do better for that place. This is what the Muslim, you know, that's what we say. So do you think, are, are we playing enough contribution to the society in, in making it better? Do you think we're doing enough? We are doing it. There's no doubt in it. I think you know, what's happened is we are a lot more, so we, see, we had been and we still are very insular in the way we are as a community. We don't actually go out and reach out to the local mm. communities and other people who are, are we consider to be our neighbours. And we know from Hadith that we have responsibility for our neighbours. We need to know whether this is it, 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 it's irrelevant whether they're Muslim or non-Muslims, that we have responsibility to know and find out how they are and to, to care for those people. Now if we're engaged in those activities and we have young children who can be equally engaged and take interest in taking responsibility and care for the in local environment and the people around them, then you'd find these people would be off the street and doing something positive. Because they'll constantly be feeling that sense of being the Khilafa of Allah, uh, Khalifa of Allah, that they need to be uh, the vicegerent of the, of the responsible one that Allah has sent mm -hmm. on earth for. That identity is where it's lacking and that crisis that we have is because of where we're not constantly or uh, we are not as frequently reminded of that identity that we have because this only comes from the pulpit in Juma every so often but we don't often find that homes, environments at homes are, are conducive to that reminder. Even the khutbahs are in, in mm. not in the language there, people, young people can understand them. Exactly. Majority of the people can understand exactly. them but it's not probably done in, in Bangla but you, like yourself you don't understand proper Bangla, do you? It's, it's witnesses yeah. here. Exactly, so, so, so even, even still the, those pulpits are not delivering the messages that they need to deliver and let alone the family environment where it is crisis where there's no interaction between people don't sit around to eat. I remember one scholar or one learned thinker who told me and he's actually an expert in parenting himself and he tells me that at least we need to ensure that one meal a day we need to sit around at the table or the floor have we have our f meal arrangements to have that with our family every member of the family should be present there so we can exchange our views and thinking and thoughts and experiences throughout the day because otherwise what happens they get locked up in their room they take their lunches mm. dinners everything up there in the room in their bedrooms and they're closed off from that family setting because that doesn't exist so there's no friendship there's no uh, care for another person or even care for oneself because they need to be able to interact with someone in the family to be able to carry that ident identity forward that's why we are ultimately suffering now you see it's true so uh, let's see what you were talking earlier on the, the Kudwa, even the Kudwa is not the language that the the generation, the young generation, they can understand if it's not English in Kudba. So we have adopted um, in our centre in the Friday an Eid Kudba and even the talks, primarily the pure English, so that um, the young generation can understand. Also, uh, we ask them, ask Imam to summarize in Bengali. And of course, there are um, um, Arabic version of it as well as. So language is an issue. Um, sometimes. Um, I've been to parenting course um, before sometimes uh, and I found out that sometimes parents talk to their children they don't understand and vice versa it's not only the language even the the thinking behind it and the ge the generation gap that's why the young kids nowadays are off the track they're spending more time in the social media mm. in the in on YouTube Twitter 
Facebook. Then but Mahfuz, but do you think our mosque and, 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 and the imams, our respected imams, they're engaging with our youth effectively? Do you think? Answer is no. Um, I mean, wha so what, what can what we do? What can we do to you break the barrier and say, has to be with no, 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 uh, disrespecting anyone, but just like how do we do that? How do we tell them, look, Sasayas and others and nanas, you guys are running the mashallah show in the mosque, but make sure our generation are saved. It's no good we praying here and our kids are selling drugs outside. It's no good here. Mm -hmm. Our kids are God killing their own mothers. You know, it's happened. It's, it's how are we gonna wake? When are we gonna wake up? It's basically the g generations, um, those like Fala and others. They, these sort of imams we need. The older generation, the mindset is different. It's no point to blame them uh, because they done their bit. But unfortunately, they're engaging with the community, particularly the young generation is, is totally isolated. So it's how do you see yourself in five years' time? Where do you want to see this community? We want to see, as we were saying al earlier on, we still haven't got permanent place in, d in Docklands, in Millwall area. So first, we must have a permanent base. Inshallah, within five years, we'll manage to get something out of it. Uh, it's an is uh, Islamic center where other activities, Muslim, non-Muslims, uh, training, um, the supplementary class will take place. Um, and and most importantly, engaging with the local community, with our neighbors, Muslim, non-Muslim neighbors. Th that way, community will flourish. Because um, we live here, we're not going back to Bangladesh or Somalian or uh, our respectable, uh, respected countries. We're staying here, this is our country. So our thinking should be based on that. And we shouldn't be isolated from the government stuff. Government, uh, yeah. Because government policies are very, very important. This is of course. So yeah. somehow, if we isolate people, look, they're trying to bully us. It's not about bullying. Do much as you can. Yeah. And if you can't do it, tell them to what to do. I think we shouldn't be isolated from the mainstream anything. That's right. That, that is really, really... Yeah, that's what we promote from our center, that you engage with the community, become a civic citizens of this country. We run a few projects, the Resilience Project. Um, and we started again. Alhamdulillah, good. We're also working with the local uh, Canary, Canary Wharf group, which uh, manages the whole area of Canary Wharf businesses. And we are we're trying to uh, do some engagement work with them, to uh, whether to, through fundraise or other rec recognized bodies, so that they could contribute to an area that they have their businesses in that is very deprived. It's a massive, far, it's a far, far cry from uh, a business hub which is generating billions and billions to uh, uh, to uh, communities that are local who are to deprived of uh, basic 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 facilities that the community needs to grow f grow grow from. Is there there are a lot of mosques probably watching, or you know, the imams or the others are watching. They have difficulties to interact with the mainstream. Mm. The, the 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 design you have in your uh, mosque is fantastic. You got center, you got mosque, you got everything else. Yeah. Um, if they want to access to you guys, is there any is there any way you can help them with ideas and design and planning out? Of course, I think uh, I think uh, Brother Mahfuz would be able to, is best to be able to answer that. But surely th we are contactable mm. in, in in our uh, over uh, through email addresses and uh, numbers, and they could always uh, find out how to go about to do things that how we had as from our experiences that we had, and I think. Um, it's about it's about having proactive, being proactive, and and being being uh, more uh, people who are more capable and creative to come forward in their environments to take those roles up. It's not going to come from the from thin air. It it will have to be from the people that you already have in your midst, who should be proactively playing their role in their communities, and they are and they themselves are more than more than capable. I feel because it's not rocket science to be able to, you know, uh, be engaging with the uh, with authorities or with the with the government, local local authorities and local government organisations and other businesses to be able to find some stake in the work that you do, so that you can do work that we can start bridging and you can do uh, collaborative work together, so that it shows as very very well in your portfolio to the wider communities. Fantastic. Yeah, the, mm, sorry, the um, uh, t uh, Council of Mosques and Tower Hamlers can be contacted. Uh, they do help. 
um, a mosque and Islamic center and educational center in town hamlet those who are members even if they are not members you can contact a uh, uh, council of mosque the uh, council of mosque directly liaises with local authority oh, great. for example islamophobia there's another issue about uh, contemporary issue islamophobia they suffer uh, our community suffers particularly the um, older generations when there is an uh, some <coughs> sort of abuse um, from 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 anybody's uh, they tend not to report and uh, when when um, people like us we challenge to the local authority they say look uh, hardly there is any report about it so the issue is islamophobia you must if there is any issues you must report either to Tahamlet uh, council of mosque or a local uh, police authority I think recently few incidents happened took place <coughs> in Isle of Dogs so you advise them directly to contact uh, local police and uh, council of mosque police are very supportive Brilliant. council of mosque are uh, very supportive um, yeah uh, as you were talking earlier on you know the canary work groups but many people in our community they say maybe not only this group any other organization look they don't help us blah blah blah, blah. but it's not only from them the community you must stand for it. Of you course. you must search for it. Right. Uh, can, can not to suffer from <coughs> silence. Be proactive. Of course. Of yeah. course. Be yeah. very because proactive. Play a role. And do you deserve it? <coughs> yeah. And do have that urgency yeah. to wake up and do something about it. Of course. Yeah. And nobody is going to change your, situ your situation, your unless state, you're unless you change it yourself. Of course. As you know, yeah. that as a principle. Of course. As, as a Muslim. Look, <coughs> can I? Um, yeah. Do you know how many uh, millions of people are memorized Quran? Do you have any idea? I read it somewhere. The estimate was. Um, Quite shocking. It's quite a lot. It is 10 million. Stark around the whole world. Subhanallah, yeah, estimate, 10 million yeah. people. I read some a long time ago, which is a lot. Alhamdulillah. If you tell like a non Muslim about this, then they get really so surprised that how on earth do 10 million people learn a book this thick? Well, is, is it difficult? C tell me your routines. How did it become um, Hafiz? Because it's, 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 it's a really difficult routine, isn't it? Yeah. It, give us an idea. I mean, for me, it took me more longer Might than Might give a lot of our young people are watching if they yeah, want to be Hafiz inshallah. and if they're trying. So that will give them a bit of. I'm sure it's yeah. difficulties and inshallah yeah. at the end, of course, it's always happiness. Tell us. Yeah, inshallah. Um, for me, it took longer than average. So usually people take two to three years. But I took around six years. But alhamdulillah, I finished it, so I'm happy about that. But when I started, I wasn't very like, um, active. I wasn't very like, my hips wasn't very strong. I was very weak. But then later I went to a maktab where my teacher was very, very like, very good. He, he, he like kind of instilled it in me, this kind of desire to be a half year. So I finished... Um, in my last three years properly uh, but for the people who want to be a Hafid then I'd, I strongly encourage they go for it because at the beginning you realize it's very hard like you look you, a lot of people that I meet when they want to do Hafid like they really want to do it and then they when they th think how thick it is that's when they're like oh no they can't do it but start off with like small steps try and learn like half a page or one page a day don't look at the whole 30 paras that helps a lot also don't give up because in the beginning, it's very hard. Do you hard. have a particular style of reading? I mean, reciting. Do um, you have a particular style? No, not really. Well, it changes. Like, I listen to different people. Can I ask you just say two lines? Because you're a Hafiz. Come on. <laughs> it will be for Barakah, okay. man. Go I'll on. do a short, short song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just say so. Whatever. A few. A'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajeem Bismillahir rahmanir rahim Inna a'atainaka al-kawthar فَصَلِّ لِرَبِّكَ وَانْحَرْ إِنَّ شَانِئَكَ هُوَ الْأَبَتَرْ You cheated us, man. You could have done something. <laughs> you said two somewhere. lines, so I thought. Okay. <laughs> the, the, the thing is, uh, just, to add, sorry, just to add to uh, Falah's, Falah said, I feel that I, I heard one brother whose local uh, brother's son, who also memorized the Quran, very young brother, and uh, he had a particular routine in his life. I think it's very important that we, and I'm sure Falah will agree with me, that there needs to be uh, a proper routine in the, in the person's life who's determined to learn and, and, and retain this Qur'an properly. Without a routine, without a, 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 a strong routine that doesn't waver, it's, very, it's impossible to actually uh, achieve this. So, to, this, this just boy is to get, wake up like every morning, 4 o'clock every morning, and he's to start reciting, reciting every morning. So, 4, half 4, and like up to six, seven o'clock, he has to recite each morning before he goes to work, school. He's also go to school. So through that, he was able to retain and to capture so mm -hmm. much. And so really, we can't be lazy. We need to be proactive. We need to really feel the urgency to do things when we want to do it. If you feel that there is a need for something that you want to do and there's a passion and a drive, 
you will achieve it, inshallah. And uh, above all, uh, the prayer is so, more, so much more important, as you know. Because without the prayer, of course, Allah is not going to uh, gift it to, to the person who wishes to pursue this. Okay, I'm going to give you one minute. We're going to finish it off, inshallah. We've only got five minutes. Your role model. I know you said in the beginning your dad was trying to do something in <coughs> 87. Yeah. And you took the same route actually. So he's in my hand, still in the back of my head. Yeah, Is there way, something coming to your uh, line because of your dad done it? In a way, yes. Uh, I think my dad has been an inspiration for me in that sense. And so has other people around me. Uh, and I think uh, community work and engagement, this is always probably runs in our blood because I have a sister who uh, works, uh, who's been working in the community since 1984. And she's been she's been awarded the MBE uh, by, by the Queen, and through because of her contribution to the youth and community work in in in, in Tower Hamlets, and mm. uh, and also all of my other sisters uh, they've been working in in the in, in the community as well, and um, and, and mashallah you know I think almost like you got no choice man yeah <laughs> exactly but I personally also have another inspiration another aspiration or and I look up to a gentleman by the name of Paul Rand. And uh, he is uh, actually uh, a visual uh, person, and he is responsible for one of the key ma major world brands that he has developed. And he's a creative himself, so Inshallah. I think that's a name to watch out for. He's probably dead by now, but I'll <laughs> finish this. It's quite um, a little gentleman. Yeah, one minute, please. Just say something to your viewers, especially young people okay, that are um, studying. I think it's very important, if you're young, um, take the opportunity you have because there were times when our elders, they didn't have these opportunities yeah. around them. If you go to a mosque, be involved. Because when the elders of the mosque, they go, then who's going to take care of the mosque? So young people, I think, step up to the position. You learn a lot of skills. Um, you become leaders, inshallah. And as they say, the ummah is built on the, shoulder, on the shoulders of the youth. So that's something I want, you should try and remember, inshallah. MashaAllah, nice you. word. Afiz Bhai, your one minute. I wouldn't say my personal one. I would say our community ones. Um, as I said earlier on, that uh, we've been trying to get a permanent place in Millwall area. So there's, uh, I'll be working on it to have a permanent place, a, a center for excellence. Thank you. Thank you. Amazing. Uh, I know it's in English. Um, these guys are what they achieved, and, and the background is amazing. He inspires myself, actually. Um, when I was very young, when I, I'm sure when I was in 10 years old, actually, we didn't have access to this kind of mosque style, and mashallah, and sisters and brothers are praying to one place. You go with your family, and you know you could do that. I think this was missing. So Alhamdulillah, you know, you guys are achieving that dream we had. You know, we couldn't achieve that. You guys achieved it, and that's amazing. Especially Ahmad Masjid Gulashole, Ahmad Bachade, you know, You know, you can have a lot of access to mainstream uh, funds as well if you can open the door for young people. We can see the crisis coming. They don't want to go to Bangladesh as well. Most of the holidays is outside Bangladesh nowadays. Mm. Outside Bangladesh. Mm. And if that goes on, can you imagine what my son would do? So we, we, ha we, we must be very worried, man. You lose your identity. Roots, yeah. Where do you go? Who, who are you? It doesn't matter what you are if you don't have your identity. And that's one of the worst things can happen to you. People say if you don't have identity, that's when people become isolated. And you can't have a conversation because you don't have identity. Mm. So this is something missing, honestly. So I think in you know, a lot of work uh, in this you're doing, honestly, you, you deserve a floor and everything. And you achieved three awards. SubhanAllah, I mean, all of our most if they achieve that part, I mean, that means you guys are doing a lot of good things. Alhamdulillah. Last word. You've got a um, copy. copy. Tell us, because I'm sure a lot of us well, are confused. Um, We're not confused, but... No, during yeah, the war, uh, lots of people died. They sacrificed their life for, for uh, humanity, uh, for uh, civilizations, particularly for the Second World War. Lots of Muslim died, as well as lots of Bangladesh facility died. There is a monument in, in, in Tal Bridge. You'll see the facility's name, Mr. Ullah, Mr. Ali. Mm -hmm. so, so remembrance them. Peop the British culture, they do a puppy, so this is our culture, and we, we should pray for those people who sacrificed for us. Alhamdulillah. 
Thank you for sharing that because I wanted to have a clear view on the viewers. Dear viewers, thank you for staying with us. If you said anything you didn't like or we've, we've made some mistakes, please do forgive us and hope to see you next week. Inshallah, make dua for us and for everyone. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.